Here we are outside Destiny. There's the old vulva symbol up there. It's not a symbol, it's uh, obviously a, a window done in that um, shape. You know, because it's phallus and vulva worship, remember? Um, and a lot of the ancient churches have got that. So obviously Destiny have um, sort of bought this building along the way. Um, I guess to keep Christianity going. I am at Destiny Church today and um, just popped in uh, for a spot of lunch um, in Glasgow and in pops the BBC um, to ask some loaded questions about um, Scotland's tax raising powers and that um, you know that there's a sense of change in Scotland and garbage like that. Um, just young girls you know that are serving in the cafe that probably like being to college or whatever. Um, so I'm like, can I tag along? Um, maybe ask a few questions or, you know, just basically record it. And the woman's like, no, no, you can't do that. You know, we're the BBC, you know, well, or we're the ones that actually pay to watch you, but I can't even see what your questions you're asking or, or whatever, you know what I mean? So what we'll do is just we'll record a little bit of it. Um, through through the door just to kind of let you see what's happening and I'll see if I can get an interview with one of the pastors in here um, while I'm here um, to see basically what work um, God is using them for because you'd imagine that they'd be, they'd be asking questions about the gospel or Jesus but obviously they're, they're just in here to spread some political propaganda some BBC propaganda using, using a church like Destiny um, Paul of Shields in Glasgow um, to propagate their their nonsense. So we'll see what we can do. Thanks, man. Up there, they're doing an interview. BBC. <laughs> well, um, just been asking around a couple of active pastors at this church, but they're not willing to um, interview, you know, about anything today. Um, at least they're open, you know, at least they're providing a service for the local community and so on. Um, I remember coming to this church about six or seven years ago um, when Avid Cohen became a believer and he sent me out some CDs and I actually gave a CD into this ministry and um, I guess that, that may have been one of the questions I might have asked them as to why they didn't actually get back to me or Aviad about, um, about actually what the Lord was doing in Aviad's life because um, he was an Orthodox Jew and he accepted Christ. And like from there, he's been really struggling, obviously, in his life, which most of us are, you know, who, who make that commitment to God. And then we go to these churches like this. And I know someone, I know at least two people that have been baptised in this church. And one of them is actually, at least one of them out of the two, are actually practising witchcraft. Actually literally practising witchcraft. Um, you know, Jess, you're on. My ministry went round to their house. We smashed a few idols a few weeks ago, which, which you will find on the Jess, you're on channel. But um, she, she's gone back to her witchcraft. Um, she knows the Bible probably just as well or better than most Christians, and yet she's doing, she's literally doing white witchcraft, I think it is, which um, I'm not sure if it's just white witchcraft and all that, but we, we know that my friend's brother is involved with this girl, so we, we, we do really need prayer for him. And my question really is to this church, Destiny, are you preaching the gospel, okay? Do you preach repentance and faith in Jesus Christ? Do you preach, preach repentance of sin? Okay, destiny. Do you know what sin is? That is transgression of the law according to what the Apostle John wrote. 1 John 3, 4. Sin is transgression of the law. Do you actually teach that breaking God's commandments and breaking God's law is sin? Okay, so that's, that's part of the gospel. Okay. And the other part is, of course, the good news of Jesus Christ and, and respect that none of us can keep the whole of God's law all the time. And the fact that if, when we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Saviour, we have an advocate in heaven. But um, as the apostles never taught, especially the apostle Paul never taught, once saved, always saved. He never taught that. And it just seems that um, 
the whole of the gospel, the whole counsel of the word of God is not being preached or taught or practiced here. Even though the doors are open for business, as it were, um, like they do lunches and teas. If you really want to get down and speak to someone about, about Jesus Christ, about maybe some problems you got in your life, the door is closed at this church because I've been to it before and I spent about 10 minutes with a pastor and after it he just says he was going on holiday for three weeks so that, that he couldn't talk to me, which was probably a lie. Okay, That was one of the pastors, I believe it was Pastor Craig at this church. I just spoke to Pastor Dan, who's more of a youth minister. Um, his ministry is based at, I think it's Strathclyde University. So, um, you know, obviously I am very much for um, Christianity and, and worshipping Jesus Christ, but when you look at it, it's very, very um, new age now, um, Christianity. They're, they're letting the BBC in to talk about politics and I want to come in and talk about Jesus Christ and, and they won't, nobody wants to talk about Jesus. But they let the BBC come in and, and, and say you know, that Scotland's getting more freedom or some, or some garbage that they're spouting. And they're just swallowing it and making them coffee and tea. And these BBC guys will just go off and, you know, that's, that's their day's work. Do you know what I mean? When Jesus Christ hasn't been mentioned... So apparently that's just, I don't know if you just finished uh, the second. Um, girls just went out the door there, um, scampered out with her, with her coffees. Um, you know what I'm saying? This is Christianity in Scotland. This is the brass tacks reality of it. Nobody wants to speak about Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to actually... Um, really sit down and, and pray with people, um, ask them, you know, why they're doing certain things, get support, get, um, they're selling, they're, they're actually selling a lot of books here and literature, like one of the founders of this church, um, I believe, whose name is Owen, um, I think I've been to hear, hear him before, uh, one, one Sunday morning. And which the other friend that's been baptised at this church calls it a disco. So it's like if you go on a Sunday morning or afternoon, it used to be very much um, strobe lights and loud music. Um, so it used to be a God Channel church. This Destiny, I'm not sure if it still is. But um, it is a big church and all that. But literally, I'm just going to leave this, this video on my channel for just, just basically as a witness um, about this church, hopefully in a positive light, and that they are doing some things right. Okay, um, they're quite friendly. They provide a service. They they do preach sort of the word of God occasionally, but it's not it's not the whole gospel they're preaching, and it is a rebuke as well. Um, and as the Book of Proverbs says, um, you know, a wise man will actually um, accept a rebuke. He he will love someone who rebukes them. So it'll be quite interesting to find out if uh, Destiny loves me after this rebuke, after this video that I've made. Or as it says in the book of Proverbs, a fool, you know, hates being rebuked. If, if a fool's rebuked, he actually hates that person, okay? So um, it'll be interesting if they're actually wise or, or they're a fool um, with regards to the word of God and if they're prepared to, to change. As the girls come in and out the door with their very busy lives, um, you know, where is Jesus in this? That's what I want to find. If I see Jesus in it, I see a little bit of, of, of God in it. Is there enough? So the destiny of this world, okay, um, is complete annihilation, okay? Um, according to the book of Revelation, okay, if you have anything that you regard above God in this world, then it could actually withhold you from God's kingdom, okay? That's very, very clear in what Jesus Christ taught. That which man loves um, next to God or above God, that God hates, okay? So um, if you're putting anything before actually preaching the gospel, um, if you're trying to self-exalt your church, then you're going to be abased. That, that's just a fact. Um, if, if they look at this video and, and they decide to start preaching the whole counsel of God 
in which they can start um, asking me for certain materials so that they, can, they can actually grow uh, in the grace of, of the gospel and the grace of Jesus Christ. Um, if they're not doing that and people are not growing and there's, there's people coming in, getting baptised and then going and practising witchcraft and like no, nothing being said about it, no pastor sort of going around and, and finding out how they're getting on or whatever it is, which happens in most churches, by the way, Baptist churches I was involved in. Um, they, they very much kind of leave you to yourself unless you start literally following them. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for people to follow them. And their example is not Jesus' example. Okay, I think they would be the first to admit that. But what they got to do is not only admit their sin, but actually seek to change, okay, seek to um, preach the whole counsel of God, which is um, the commandments, which is the fact that we should be keeping them in faith, and we should be rejecting everything that is pagan and of this world, okay, because um, if you actually look at, you know, study Jesus' words, he's very clear about um, those that are suffering for the kingdom in this world for his name's sake, will be rewarded, but if you're actually in this world getting all the worldly comforts and sort of disregarding much, much of the gospel and much of the word of God, you're playing with fire. You're, you really are playing with fire. Um, so i just like to leave um, destiny with, with these thoughts. Um.